Thank you for watching this video. Please click on the like and subscribe buttons so that I can continue to make more videos like this. Question 96. An 8 gauge or larger solid copper equipotential bonding conductor shall be extended to service equipment to eliminate voltage gradients in the pool area. Is this true or false? Okay, we know we're going back to the uh, pool area. So we can look under swimming pool. Now possibly there's service equipment and we could look under that as a subheading of swimming pool to see if we could find something. So let's go in the index under swimming pools again. Here we are again in the index under swimming pools and if we're looking for something we have a solid copper equipotential bonding conductor. So if we look under bonding there's an awful lot to choose from. Now if you look for uh, service equipment and voltage gradients you don't find anything like that. So let's go with bonding let's just keep a marker here but let's go with the very first one right here and see if we can't find it right there. 680.26 look at this 680.26 equipotential bonding so our first listing in the index works out great that's what we need to find out about now look at here bonded parts that's what it was talking about we have to uh, are we going to have to run this 8 gauge solid copper to the service equipment? If you look down here, an 8 gauge or larger solid copper bonding conductor provided to reduce voltage gradients in the pool area shall not be required to be... Now what a bad time for a break. We're going to have to go up to the top of the next column to continue, but remember it's here, it shall not be required to be. Okay, we're at the top of the next column and it reads, shall not be required to be extended or attached to remote panel boards, service equipment, or electrodes. And our question was saying, do we have to do it to service equipment? Our question as said that it shall be extended. And the code we just read says, shall not be required to be. So here is a case where you have to read it very carefully because when you get the true false one says it can be and then the code says it cannot be it could flip the true and false of the answer. The statement is shall be extended and so if this is required it would be true but the code says that it's not required and that makes the answer false for our exam. Here is a learning point. When you've done this much research in the index on the code to find the right answer, and you have a question like this where it's a little bit tricky, true and false, and you have can be, shall be, shall not be, things like that as your answer choices, you want to take a deep breath, realize, okay, I found the answer, what is the question really asking? What does the code really say? And then make sure that you mark the correct answer on your test. It would really be a shame for you to do all that nice work and really in real life know what the answer is, but when it comes to taking a test because they're trying to give you a trick question, you miss that point on your test. That would really be a shame. So make sure that you're careful when you get to something like this and make sure that you get the right answer on your test. If you've gotten this far, you deserve to get credit for getting that answer correct. Thank you for watching this video. Please click on the like and subscribe buttons so that I can continue to make more videos like this. If you find this video helpful, please consider donating using the PayPal link below. Thank you.